Thank you very much. Good morning. <laughs> I'll talk about uh, plans for the future and why it's so hard to follow them. And I'd like to start by asking you a question. <laughs> Imagine I told you I would give you a free snack one week from today, but that you had to choose now which snack you'd like, an apple or a chocolate bar. Which one would you choose? Please raise your hand if you'd like the apple. Great. Now raise your hand if you'd like the chocolate bar. Interesting. Let me ask you another question now. Imagine that I told you you could have the free snack right now, that I have them here, right behind stage. In this case, which one would you choose? Again, raise your hand if you'd like the apple. And don't be shy. You know, we are, we are not filming you, so it's okay. <laughs> okay, now raise your hand if you'd like the chocolate bar. Awesome. So I see more hands for the chocolate bar right now than I saw a moment ago. The questions that I just asked you were actually part of a real life research study. And what the study found was that when given the choice of a free snack one week later, half of the people chose the apple. However, when given the immediate choice, <laughs> only two out of 10 people chose the apple. So if you changed your mind just a moment ago, congratulations, you're completely normal. <laughs> Actually, three people out of 10 ch uh, changed their minds and decided to go with the unhealthy snack when offered the immediate choice. So let's reflect on these results for a moment. What was this study trying to show? Why did people change their minds? People often make plans for the future that they don't follow. When deciding what to do in, the, in a, week from, a week later, half of the people chose to go with a healthy snack because they care about their health. However, when given the immediate choice, eight out of 10 people could not resist the temptation of eating chocolate. So interestingly, this is not a behavior that is limited to eating. It also applies to exercising. How many of us have paid the gym monthly membership, planning to go regularly, but in reality, rarely go? Dieting. How many of us plan to start our diet on Monday, but that specific Monday never comes? <laughs> Quitting smoking. How many of us have had several less cigarettes, and also savings. In the case of savings, we might recognize the importance of savings for retirement and plan on stepping up our savings with our next paycheck. But when the next paycheck arrives, we face a dilemma. Saving more requires us to spend less. And I don't know about you, but it has happened to me often I go shopping, I cannot resist the temptation of buying cute outfits like this one, <laughs> and I spend more than I had planned. Economists and psychologists have argued that because people like immediate gratification, that they tend to choose things that give them instant pleasure over long-term benefits. As an economist studying financial and health choices, I see this all the time. People make plans for the future that they want to follow and that they believe are good for them, but they can't fulfill them. So we call self-control the ability to resist these short-term temptations and follow plans that are beneficial for the future. Why is the lack of self-control important? There is a growing amount of evidence showing that self-control failures is related to many outcomes in our lives. The most um, famous study is a study that is called the Marshmallow Test. And this study was conducted by Stanford psychologists for the first time in the 60s. So this test put a kid, a four-year-old kid, alone in a room 
with a marshmallow. And the kid was told, Jimmy, I will go, I'll go out and come back in 15 minutes. If you don't eat this marshmallow until I'm back, I'll give you a second marshmallow and they'll both be yours. However, if you eat the marshmallow before I'm back, I'll not give you a second one. So a hidden camera in the room shows the temptation in this kid's face. He smells the marshmallow. He licks the marshmallow. <laughs> he eats tiny pieces of the marshmallow, hoping no one notices. And actually, two out of three kids end up eating the marshmallow before the 15 minutes are over. Most importantly, studies that follow these children as they grew older found that the ability to wait for both marshmallows predicted many important outcomes years later in their lives. For example, preschool children who were able to wait longer were less likely to be overweight by age 11, they were less likely to use drugs as adults, and they, hi they had higher SAT scores. So what the study is suggesting is that having this ability to have self-control and resist temptation is important for many domains of our lives. So let's see where this leaves us. So far I've told you that many of us lack self-control and that this lack of self-control is related to many uh, negative consequences in dimensions that we really care about our lives. So it's not a very positive talk so far, <laughs> but take a deep breath because it's about to get better. So let's see, what can we do about self-control failures? Some researchers have argued that we have a fixed amount of energy to resist temptation. So the more we put ourselves into situations where we need self-control, the more likely it will be that we'll fall into temptation. One solution then would be to avoid this kind of tough situations. If you're on a diet, for example, you could wait to, uh, to actually buy your lunch before you're hungry so that you, know, you don't fall into temptation and eat unhealthy food. Of course, there are situations that are harder to avoid. Other proposals to deal with self-control failure uh, have to do with commitment contracts. Commitment contracts are arrangements that help individuals resist temptation and follow their plans for the future. So here's how it works. Imagine a person wants to quit smoking, which we know is a very bad health behavior. So she knows that sooner or later, she'll have the temptation to smoke one extra cigarette. So she enters one of these arrangements to help her resist this temptation. One very successful program to help people stop smoking had smokers deposit funds into a savings account for six months. After six months, they took a urine test for nicotine. And their money was just returned to them if they passed the test. So these commitment contracts usually tie some sort of behavior that the person wants to achieve, and that can be verified, to some financial punishment in case the behavior is not followed, or financial reward in case it is. These contracts, they have the ability to help, the, the, the potential to help people's lives by helping them fulfill their plans for the future. However, people will all only enter these contracts if they are aware of their self-control issues. Otherwise, they simply will think that they don't need them. And actually, there's evidence that people are really over-optimist over -optimist about how much self-control they will have in the future. One study by two economists have asked people how many times they were planning to go to the gym in the next few weeks. 
the study found that people were planning, were really far off in their predictions. They were planning to go to the gym four times a week, but they were actually going only one time a week. So what this shows is that there is a large gap between intentions and actions. So there is space to raise awareness about self-control. What we're doing is to investigate what, uh, how can information about self-control make people make different decisions. Can explaining the concept of self-control, why we lack it, and why this can be harmful, make people more aware of their own self-control issues? Can it make people look for ways to overcome these issues and make commitment contracts more common and effective? We ran a randomized control trial, which is considered today one of the most rigorous scientific methods in the social sciences, where we gave information about self-control to part of the sample leaving the other part of the sample without such information. The information we gave the people were very, was very similar to the information I just gave you here today about the choices between apples and chocolate and the results and implications of the real life study. So officially, you're, not, you're all now part of my experiment. You're my guinea pigs. So what we found was that the group that got the information was actually more likely to save and saved more, a greater amount, than the group with no information. Moreover, this saving was done under commitment. Once the people choose how much to save, they could not revise or change their choices. What the results we have so far make me believe is that the first step to overcome lack of self-control and its harmful implications is to make people aware of the phenomenon. Also important is to create and disseminate new ways to help people resist temptations. We must be fearless about setting and achieving our financial and health goals. A critical step is recognizing the temptations that us as human beings may face along the way. Using the mechanisms that are available to help us resist these temptations, be by avoiding certain situations or engaging in commitment contracts, it's a critical step to, find, uh, to see the changes we want to see in our lives. And this is within our reach. Thank you. <laughs>